Hello everyone. So it's been a long time since I've done any of these videos. I did several months of them almost daily um, at the beginning of the last lockdown. And I think it's because we've gone into another lockdown now that I thought, well, let's start them again. A lot has happened in the last year, hasn't it? On Friday at the lunch class, somebody said when I asked, what do you want me to talk about? They said, how about we go back to the beginning uh, and I'd like you to talk about impermanence, some very basic teaching of the Buddha. In a way, I thought, well, there's no beginning and there's no end to the Buddha's teachings. I was thinking of what Sangharachita said, that there are no higher teachings, there are only deeper understandings. And how true that is. So I think we can sometimes look around. We're searching for something that we haven't got. We're searching for some knowledge that we don't have. And when we do that, I think that's what we're doing. We're looking for something deeper. You know, there must be some little trick to getting life right. And of course, as the Buddha pointed out, that's just not how it is. It's not so. We can't kind of um, win life, as it were. And yes, impermanence is, well... You know, it's something that we all know quite a lot about, but unfortunately we know it at quite a superficial level. And it means that emotionally we don't know it. Deep down, we don't know it. And it's why we suffer, because we don't really look it in the eye. We don't live from day to day um, knowing that impermanence is there right with us. So... Having made that claim, I better try and substantiate it. So, yeah, of course we see impermanence all around us, don't we? And, you know, particularly at this really difficult time with being in the midst of COVID, um, we are reminded of impermanence all the time. But we're reminded about it in a particular way that probably gives us quite a lot of anxiety. So, you know, when we hear these figures couple of days ago, it was something like 1,300 people had died in one day. And I think what what thoughts of that da tends to do is to um, bring up fear and bring up fear for ourselves and our loved ones. Well, the very fact that we experience that fear, that terror, that wanting to blame somebody, wanting to put it right, um, just shows us that we don't really understand impermanence. So people are dying all the time. And we're very fortunate in this country, but in other countries, they are probably dying at a much greater rate than they are here. In normal life, you know, in everyday life. You know, there are countries where children die because... Perhaps they're not vaccinated or they have um, terrible diarrhea or, or, you know, whatever it is. There are some countries when death is much more a normal part of life than it is for us. For us, it's generally a rarity. And indeed, you know, you can often get to be middle-aged without ever having experienced directly somebody close to you's death. Well, in a way, that's all changing. What COVID has done is um, bring us right up against the fact that it's not everywhere else where people are dying, it's with us. I was very struck by what one of the staff at a hospital said the other day. Um, she said something like, well, she said that the average age of people dying in the hospital was 60. That sounds safe enough for some of you, doesn't it? You know, if you're nowhere near that. But she said, by no means is it only people of 60 and over that are dying. There are a lot of young people. And she was, well, she was in tears and she had just um, watched, been with somebody in their 20s dying. So this is bringing us right up against the truth of impermanence in a way that maybe we haven't had to face before 
maybe we haven't wanted to face before. <coughs> so death doesn't just happen to other people. It also happens to us and not just through COVID. So um, what does it mean to face that without getting into anxiety and depression and um, yeah, fear, basically fear for ourselves? Well, there's lots of angles to this that I could talk about. And one of the most relevant ones is um, well, it's coming to a realisation. In other words, it's coming to see reality, which is that our own life is no more important, no more significant than anybody else's. We all cherish our own life. And it's a very um, mistaken, ignorant, foolish um, idea, thought, that our life is more important than anyone else's. And this is difficult. This is difficult because obviously we are trapped in our own body. And um, it does seem, you know, we, we have a strong instinct to protect ourselves. A much stronger instinct to protect ourselves than to protect anybody else. Now, I'm not saying that we're not just as important as anyone else. You know, life itself is important. And one of the things that practicing as a Buddhist teaches us is that um, the more that we are other regarding, the more that we cherish other people as much as ourselves, to that extent, we will reach a state of freedom and peace and ultimately happiness contentment all those wonderful qualities that we long for that we would really love to embody in ourselves but it requires that we become less selfish and to a large extent I think that's bound to happen you know what we're all going through is brought death very close maybe some of you have experienced um, friends or loved ones who have died or maybe if they haven't died maybe they've now got long COVID which is going to be very debilitating which is going to change people's lives and that's the truth of impermanence that life changes all the time and we turn away from that truth and of course, impermanence has a wonderful side to it because when we're suffering, it means that that suffering is going to end at some point. Everything changes, not just the good things in life, but also the difficult things, the painful things, the things that we would like to see the back of, but we're glad they are impermanent. Actually, I could probably do a whole series of talks on impermanence, you know. I'm scratching the surface, but I'm trying to give a flavour at the moment of um, how by looking towards other people, um, by realising that we are not the centre of the earth, that we are not the most important being here, there's a liberation to that. There's... There's an encouragement then that we don't just have to protect ourselves. And it also shows us that we need to, um, well, we need to follow the guidelines and not risk other people's lives. Because if we're carrying COVID, we might not even know it, but we could be killing other people. You know, it's as strong as that. It's not often put that strong, but it's a pity it isn't because that is the truth. So I'm hoping that you're all keeping well, that you're meditating daily, and I think I will probably do a few meditations in some of these um, videos. But for now, I'll say goodbye. See you again soon.